My name is Phil Delaney. I am the assistant tour director. It's like whole entire season's been a grind. Just working nonstop, one event to the next. Like load up the trailers, load up the rig and drive. Charlotte's definitely a significant city. We definitely tried our best to keep this event here in Charlotte. A lot of players love this area. A lot of players off season in this area. And it's just a general good place for disc golf. Jeff Spring was mostly the guy that decided Nevin. I uh, did some walkthroughs in Charlotte area disc golf, and once Hornet's Nest was out of the picture for us, we had to look at exploring other options. And so we came to Nevin and kind of tweaked it a little bit. It's been long hours to set and prep the course. Definitely been putting in 60 to 70 hours a week. There's two local Charlotte people that I think like have been a very big part in this uh, evolution of Nevin, and that's one, Mark Uther, and then two, Stan McDaniels. Both those guys have been driving around on trailers, clearing brush for all of us to like experience this park and this championship. I'm just excited to see these players, just like the intensity that you're, you know you're playing for a lot of money. We're trying to make this event one of the most prestigious of the year. We were able to add a lot of cash. So this is a purse over $300,000, which is the first and biggest purse in disc golf history. Players are starting to learn that like this is something that you need to fight for. Hello everyone and welcome to the big one. The 2022 Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship presented by Barbasol, Jeremy Colling, Paul Uliberry, bringing you all the action. Big Barry commentary, man. Can't wait to do this. I've been excited about this all year. We've been anticipating it. It is here and we get to see some good golf in some tight woods. But first, we got a sale going on. 10% off site-wide. Free shipping on orders over $50. That sale starts... U U.S. only. Oh, U.S. only. Yeah. That sale starts today and runs through Monday, so go ahead and get on there ASAP. No coupons needed, so that's good. And the Patreon discount is 30% off, so... It's a good deal. Get on there. Last tournament of the season. Get yourself some discounts. Garrett Gerthy, folks. He's had a great season. Silver Series winner at Beaver State Fling and he's just really been in the mix all week. I mean, all year, excuse me, sorry. Anthony Barella, surprising to see him even playing on the first day the way that he has been playing this season, honestly. He's had such a great year. I wouldn't call it a breakout year because I feel like he kind of has been breaking out every year, but he has really put together a solid season, as has this man from Finland, Vino Makela. Best stat, 10% part, that is a Frequent occurrence on parking your shots. Obviously really great off the tee, but also a phenomenal putter. And the very smooth, Dr. Smooth, Mason Ford. Another great season, world ranking 36th, but at any given time, he can be up there and present trouble for the field. He is a very good player out of Texas. And we are here at the Matt Keats Memorial Disc Golf Course at Nevin Park to a newly designed course. The Charlotte Disc Golf Club did an incredible job getting this place ready, and we have a tough venue. Yeah, hole one isn't that tough, though. It's one of the easier holes on the course. This is a par three, 320 feet. The main objective is to hit the initial gap. Or is that a bounce to the left? Don't hit that. There's actually an out of bounds early. If you don't cross yeah. over the sidewalk, you're out of bounds. So there's a little bit of pressure to make sure you hit this initial gap. Once you're over that fence, you're in bounds, but there is OB on the left side of the fairway as well. Anthony, very wide. There are some backdoor routes, or there's a good kick route. That's gonna get him into <laughs> circle two. I mean, Mason has the style of play that really matches up well with the tight woods, and he says he's most comfortable in the woods, so looking forward to see how he does today. And there you go, throwing the flippy mid-range. Needs to get up the hill. Yeah, open That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good reaction off the trees. Up next, representing Innova Champion Discs. Mr. Double G, Garrett Gerthy. Garrett's one of my favorite players to watch in the woods. One of the smoothest rock throwers, rock threes. Anything understable, he is so smooth with. He should certainly be someone to watch out for today. Going with the T-Bird. 
Yeah, that's a look as well. Yeah. None of these really perfectly navigated the fairway yet. Vino had a good showing last week at the US DGC. Yeah, he's coming off a hot nine under par final round to catapult him up to a respectable finish. An early tree kick, but it kicks across and bounce. He's going to have... Oh, I did not. I was unaware that there's out of bounds on the right side. So he does proceed to the drop zone because he did not clear in bounds. So unfortunate there. Not the easiest oh, of drop zones, okay. but that is very fortunate. Let's see if AB can take the good break and run with it. Anthony in the basket. Great start there, capitalizing on the good break. And it's uh, this format, we have to talk about it. We got to get into this because many of our viewers have seen this, but there's also plenty of new play, new watchers of our Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship Finals who have never seen this. There are four cards going off today, 16 players, and the best four scores move on. Move on to what? Move on to the semi, to the quarterfinals. Quarterfinals. And then the semifinals will have another 16 players. Very good putt there for Mason to start it off. Clean, confident, up the hill. Yeah, so basically there to, after today, there will be players who got buys from points that they accumulated through the entire season as Vino lines this up. This is Big an important putt. par. Yeah. All right, bogey save, correct. And then there are eight players the final day who get buys all the way into the semifinals. Right, and then so any ties for the fourth and final spot that tie will be broken by tour series points throughout the year. So only four players, there will be no playoffs moving mm -hmm. on. It's a very tough format because once you're out of it, it's like you kind of feel like you're not playing for any reason because there's no tomorrow. Yeah. So you must be the top four of the 16 players playing today. On to hole two, a very challenging left to right breaking par three. This was formerly a par four as we move past the FPO basket on the left side. Here is the MPO basket. Forehand that flips up slightly is the play. Anthony Burrell has a lot of power. He can get there with a stable disc. He just has to avoid that one tree in the middle of the fairway. And he's going inside it. And but this is slow down. He's got so much steam that the disc doesn't have a time to hyzer down the fairway before going out of bounds. And the previous day leading up to this, there was also a play-in tournament for players who accumulated enough points to be kind of on the bubble. And then two players from the eight players who mm -hmm. played... Six got, players. Or six players that mm -hmm. played got to play today. One being the guy sitting right next to me who came in with the best score in that qualifying round. So you are playing today. Correct. And Garrett Gerthy, a very challenging backhand turnover line, catching some high trees, but falling safe. Mason Ford with a beautiful flip up forehand. He's gonna be right at circle's edge. Wasn't, wasn't really aware that Mason had 400 feet of forehand power, but this is a little bit downhill. And that's a great counter skip for Vino. He is also gonna be right there at the circle's edge. That'd be a great bounce back birdie after the bogey on one. Wanted to mention that plan because the best score coming out of there was a plus one. Very tough yeah. conditions, very slippery tee pads, a little bit of rain. I'm guessing played four to five strokes harder than it is going to today in perfect condition. So I'm looking to see anything around four, five, six under will be plenty enough to move on. That's the yeah, type I mean, of course we're playing. These guys aren't going to be birdie in every hole. This is a course where if you're an inch or two off your line, it could send you into a place where absolutely no chance that you're going to save your par. As Vino lines up the birdie putt, and he does indeed get the birdie and moves back to even par. That's a great birdie to pick up. That means that Mason's even closer. Yeah. 
And that is a nice start for Mason, two under. Showcasing the versatility with the backhand and forehand control in the woods. And carry just over the rim for the par. Yeah, the course is so tough. Uh, some players, I believe Jake Hebenheimer and Kevin Jones uh, had mentioned that it's one of the hardest courses on tour. And when the tee pads do get a little bit of that red clay on your shoes and you drag it on the tee, it makes these tee pad areas very slick. The weather was much better for round two. I, and technically, this is round one. The plan didn't yeah. quite count. No, so. it's, it's, it counts. Because you guys played mm -hmm. it. You competed oh, it, there, it, and, it, and it set the tone for the scores that are yeah. probably going to be shot out here, which is it plays very hard. Yeah. It's, it, you know, coming into this round, if the tee pads were dry, which they were kind of still holding on to a little bit of that moisture and slickness from the red clay, as Mason has got a beautiful turnover drive here with a really bad kick at the end. But that was a fantastic looking drive. Yeah, I think that would have been the first backhand I've seen maybe make circle one. Right. That was crazy. Really good control. This reminds me a lot of, of hole two for the angle being thrown on, the mm. turn that you need to get to the right side. Yeah, it's just a longer straight yeah. shot before it starts breaking. But it's very similar in the way that you just have to throw a very straight disc controlled this is turned over too much but there are little yeah there's avenues. ways you want to be on the left hand side if you get a kick mm -hmm. tight right is kind of bogey land anthony going stand up wraith this is looking really good folks there's that one tree at the corner to beat if he does miss that i think he's home free for the birdie And a good forehand approach shot for Anthony. Nice up shot from G. This is a tough birdie. I'm guessing this is, there's not very many twos on it. Not too many. Give it to him, maybe, nope. There might have been one little bid there. I mean, Mason would have been all the way there if he misses that last tree. I know. Can he give oh, it to him? Off left side zero. Birdies. Yeah, sorry. I was just making sure that. <laughs> yeah. Zero birdies on the day. Two doubles two bogeys, and the rest par. And I can't imagine there being anybody closer than Vino or Mason for the birdies there. I mean, those were fantastic drives. The only way you could really park it, in my opinion, although Mason made it look like it's possible with the backhand, is the sidearm flip-up or, or lefty, which I don't think there's any lefties left in the tournament. Chris Clemens. Yeah, none today. Yep. Um, but yeah, this was a that was a very difficult hole. Once again, two, the second hole and the third hole traditionally on this course are par fours. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a soft par for the course, but it is they are labeled as par four, and the tournament comes around, and it definitely plays as a very challenging par three, as does this one. This is the third hardest hole in the course. Hole four is 462 feet downhill, and you've got you got a little telephone pole right down the middle of the fairway. And you just have to treat it as if it were a tree, but it's got the wires hanging down too, and you have to miss those and get over this out-of-bounds creek at the bottom of the hill. Mason could be heading towards that out-of-bounds area. No, he gets a good kick, and he's going to be inbounds on, this, on the basket side of the creek. This is traditional hole 18 here at Nevin Park. Yeah, and you're going to see a lot of people play this hyzer line. It's easier to get all the way across, but it also is much more well guarded into the green. The left to right bender down the hill using the left part of the fairway to kind of drift, I feel like opens the pure shot all the mm. way down there. But obviously a harder shot to throw. Let's see what AB decides to do. 
Garrett gets a horrible kick, and that's early and left, which is what you really would like to avoid. AB going down the left side, getting it to drift a little bit, but this is just going to head up the left side of the fairway. Oh, well, actually, that's a good shot. That's right a really there. good shot. See, I like that play because then you don't have to worry about any of those guardian trees hitting you and popping you back into that out of bounds creek. Garrett finding. Yeah, you just have to kind of cross your fingers and hope. And look at this shot for Garrett. D oh, no! Coming up short and out of bounds after getting through the entire forest. That was a great way to look at it through that film because oh. it, it looked like he was across the oh whole time. My God, that totally. was crazy. And so they're going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he crossed on that side, and I wouldn't have made a different call, I don't think, if I was on his card, but uh, that might have actually hurt Garrett in the long run because that is a brutal roll away. Sometimes it's best to air ball. And he did. In a way. <laughs> in, sure. in a way. He did air ball. I think he hit the band. Do you he not did. call... Yeah, I think he hit mm. the band or the cage. He hit he hit okay. metal. Hmm. I'm gonna need a replay on that one. Oh, oh don't no. Roll. And this could head out of bounds. This oh goodness. This card is getting punished right now by the difficult hole four. Big putt for Anthony. To stay at even. And that's gonna be left side. That is a tough three putt coming up can't afford to miss really any in the circle at this vino for the big birdie he connects from just outside the circle that's a huge swing in vino's favor he is now at one under yeah this type of tournament missing putts in the circle is on a, on a tough course like yes, this, it will just come back and haunt you. The, the course is so difficult that you just don't have the luxury of being able to miss putts once you do get to the green. The, the difficulty will take care of itself with the kicks that you're getting. Mm -hmm. There's some out of bounds in some places. Honestly, this is one of the easiest holes to find out of bounds. On the, on the rest of the course, the difficulty is just going to be what you see on the left side and right side of this fairway. It's very thick if you get off the prime landing zones. Hole five, par four, 580, dog leg to the right. You want to throw it straight about 250 feet, land it on top of that shelf to the left, and then you'll have this little fairway to navigate all the way to the pin, which is protected by the out of bounds deep. There are aggressive plays. Sidearm gets down there quite a bit. Backhand turnovers can get down there, but I guess it's as easy as you want to make it. I wouldn't call this one necessarily easy, but I do see what you're saying. You don't need to get too aggressive off the tee. And that just going straight like Vino has here is fine. He's going to have some trees to contend with now that's, that he's turning down the hill to the right. But That's too far. A little bit too yeah. far, yeah. And you want it to get a little bit of right break. Let's see if Mason makes the adjustment. This is heading about the same spot. But the fact that he is a few feet longer might open up a gap that Vino doesn't have. Or maybe Vino has something that Mason doesn't have. But This course is unique because a lot of tight wooded courses, this looks... If this is clean, this is going to be picture almost. perfect. Yep. But it's Close. unique in, in the fact that it's a heavily wooded course where you, in order to make birdie... There's no scramble birdie. You can't just chuck it wherever yeah. you want and then be like, okay, I'm so far up there that I'm going mm -hmm. to have something into the green. Like, mm -hmm. for example, their shots right there, they miss the fairway only by 10 feet, and the scramble birdie is going to be so tough. Yeah, it's not necessarily impossible for the other three guys, but Garrett is in a position where scramble birdie does not exist. I mean, he's just looking at, please, can I walk off this hole with a four now? This is the traditional hole one here at Nevin Park. They moved the basket back, and I really like the adjustment they've made for this because this log right here is so hard to get over. And Mason says, well, watch this as he clears the log by an inch or two, and now he has a birdie putt 
inside the circle. And that's a fairway hit for him, and he's in scramble position. He's, yeah, yeah. Vinyl not getting quite as clean on the way down the hill. Let's see what AB is lining up. He's got a putter in hand. It's just a dead straight shot. If this Over is a log, no. Yeah. Perfectly online. Just hard to get that height right, especially with out of bounds behind the basket. Thing of beauty. Garrett pulls out the Sonic. And Vino's only probably 85 feet away, and look what he's got to do. I mean, you just have to come to Charlotte, North Carolina, come play this course, and just walk five feet off the fairway, and you'll see why these scramble shots throughout the rest of the round are going to feel... Exactly. Walk. It's, it's exactly. Don't bring your discs. <laughs> yeah. Leave your on. discs in the car. We want you to keep playing. So just walk the course and good. then go play Kilbourne. <laughs> Kilbourne's a great course. Kilbourne is a fun course. But Hornet's Nest, the, the other venue that we've had for the Pro Tour Championship is only two miles away from here, yeah. two or three miles away. So this is a really nice place if you want to come down for vacation Come check out these courses as Mason moves the three under, and this is officially a hot start here at Nevin. Yeah, and AB misses the putt from the log. He'll tap in for par. That's another one that you kind of need those to fall mm -hmm. early. This I feel like this course is all about momentum early. If you can get under par, it really takes the anxiety away in the middle of the course, which I feel like is um, the scariest and the most difficult. On to hole six. A lengthened par three, 333 feet. It is uphill, I believe 35, and it's a bit tricky because the tee pad is actually raised above the hill of it. So your ceiling is kind of tricky. It's gonna be a fairway driver for most of these guys. AB definitely has the power to get here, and so does Garrett to get here with a mid-range, but it's gonna require quite a bit of power and control. Clearing at the right height and thrown with the right disc. Mason Ford has got another birdie look from 25 feet away. The hot start continues. Too heavy on the hyzer, I fear. Okay. Yeah. Circle's edge. A little, what, four feet outside the circle, so. Maybe we'll have that to get back to par. And Garrett is going with a T-Bird, and I like the width. It's going to come up a bit short, but he's going to have an obstructed look for his first birdie of the round. Not it. Difficult hole. It only says 333 feet, but it plays right around 420 410. I'm not sure if you mentioned that before, but it's hard because it's going straight uphill. So the disc you choose isn't like your 400 <sighs> foot disc. You know, it's like your, mm. it's like mm -hmm. in between fairway slash driver. And then for somebody like AB and Garrett, as we watch Vino try to ring this up for a par. Yeah, that's going to be back to back bogeys where he, he definitely knew. He knows that he could have given himself a better chance for the par on these last two holes. AB will go. step that in. But for like AB and Garrett, they're probably in between mid-range and mm -hmm. fairway. And so it's a nice hole for that gap. Yeah, it's like, what do you do when fairway driver's too much and rock is not enough? Yeah. Or you could be just noodle arm like me and just your fastest disc as hard as you can. I believe you're going with ESP Nuke. I, I mean, I, I differ in between the nuke and, you know, maybe like a stable putter. Okay, yeah. whatever. Garrett Gerthy with a nice Something birdie like look, and that brings him know. to two over. Know. You're done. I'm not sure what I do. Not what Mason's doing, because what he's doing is it's very smooth. rare. It's very controlled, rare. and it's yeah. it looks repeatable. There's nothing. He hasn't had to do anything really uh, outside the norm. I mean, he's just hitting gaps and making it's putts. It's not normal to get four birdies in the first six holes in this course. That's outside the norm. 
I would agree. It just seems like it's repeatable. Yeah. You know, the way he's doing it, I'm like, yeah, I could go out there and do that. Well, if you're Mason, he, he's probably going to do it. <laughs> if he makes it into tomorrow. On to hole seven, par three, 375 feet. And the way the drone is flying really makes this hole look like it's kind of just a straight shot on level ground. And it is anything but. We have an elevated basket and a super sloping fairway that gets even slopier once you get to this basket. This is a very, very, this is a must park to run your birdie bid because any missed putts are going to work their way down the hill. This is flippy. If this gets a good skip and misses the roots, it just didn't quite have enough steam. He ain't running that. No, you can't. It's actually, it's actually not even easy to lay up sometimes on this hole. Oh, no. Anthony will hope that he can lay up because that... That if that kicks left, like hard left, yeah. you almost have nothing. And yeah. there's a road over there. Garrett's looking for this to just start turning, and there it is. Needs to pump the brakes. The brakes right now. Oh. Yes. Oh my gosh! It tried for so long. It's still good. Very good. Vino, this is another good-looking shot that just doesn't quite have enough turn. And that's going to be decision time for Vino coming up. Well, his decision is easy. Just outside the circle, one over par, he's going. Yeah, 16 players again. You can't just mess around. You've got to be getting birdies, or at the worst, you've got to be saving your pars. And Anthony has thrown a great shot through the woods. I don't know if it's close enough. No. No, it's not close enough. He's having to lay up. That's coming in pretty hot. Watch out. Okay. Upside down. This can get frisky. You need to be careful with the upside down. That, I, that how many times have you tried the upside down layup in your tournament life? Um, every year at US did you see when my drive doesn't get to the green. That's it. Oh, I thought he had it. On 18, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 18, you, I've done it. Yep, and that's what happens. That I, I think that's why the play on this hole, if you can, go long. Take your comebacker up for the birdie instead of having to go downhill with the birdie. Yeah, I mean, you need to be aggressive with the tee shot. Hit the fairway. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you get around, the, you can get those trees to help you right around the basket. Garrett for birdie, and this could be trouble. Yeah, he's going to be looking at that thing coming back to his feet and then some. I like that they raise the basket so you can see it from the tee, but it is a cruel putting green. A Garrett with a great save there to stay at two over. But two over is going to be the number for him and Vino when he taps out his upcoming bogey, and it'll be three straight bogeys coming up for Vino. And, it, I mean, it's crazy to think that you're on the seventh hole of a round and you, you're starting to feel like your chances are almost completely drawn dead. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take 15 or 14 of the best holes you've ever played ever. Yeah. I mean, you, well, realistically, you're looking at the scores and you're thinking to yourself, like, okay, if I get six more birdies and no, no bogeys, 400 is a good number. Yes. Can I do that? Behind every face is a story. Unique. Each and every one. Beautiful stories inspiring stories, some beyond our wildest dreams. And every day, a new story begins. We salute every fearless, self-assured, undeterred, hopeful face all across America. Here's to the next 100 years. Barbasol. Hole eight has a par four, it's a left to right bend and you really want to land right at this tree right here with the blue mini from there it's about 340 to 350 to the pin through the tight woods over this ditch to a basket that's been put just on the other side new tee pad new basket on this one only changed a little bit as far as the distance but it definitely changes the difficulty on it 
Mason's got this nice and wide. If it gets a good skip and slows down before the ditch, that is prime position right there for Mason. Is that perfect? Yeah, I think the only way that it could be even better. No, I think that is perfect. For Mason, I don't think you, he would want to move that at all. Garrett electing to go for the big shot. He gets across the ditch, but he's going to be well off the fairway, and that becomes a difficult scramble. Anthony going slow disc, and that's going to be short and, and right of where I think he'd like to be, but he might have a good backhand Anheuser play from there. I personally, sure. yeah, I personally think for a forehand turnover player left of the bridge from the tee pad side is good, but for a backhand Anheuser player like Mason, right side is ideal. Vino with a really good looking effort that doesn't quite drift enough down the right side and that kicks back into the woods on the left. AB, he's probably pushing 390 feet Coming in with a ton of speed, and look at this, Paul, all the way through. Wow. He's going to have an outside circle look right there. Dream spot. And he pulls oh, it. no. Oh, boy. That's going to test the bogey territory, too. Absolutely. He would. He definitely wishes he had that back because that is definitely a shot that he has on stock reserve. Yeah, and AB's outside the circle putting has been pretty nice as of late. Mm -hmm. He even decided to make a little tiki course in my house, him and Adam Hammes. All <laughs> nice. around, they lit it up with little glow sticks. Oh, that's great. He had his TD hat on that he's wearing right now, which is hilarious. <laughs> so they've been getting some good practice in. And Mason has gone from prime position to struggling to save the par. He's going to be outside, maybe even outside circle two. Yeah, he's it's going to be well short. Garrett just trying to fight his way through the woods. But that's what's crazy about this course is perfect drive. Well done. Tiny mistake. Tiny. And now bogey. And it's like the old adage, like you'd rather be off by two feet than two inches. Not here. If he's off by two feet, he still has no <laughs> chance. <laughs> well, you the know? thing is, if you're off by two feet, your kicks aren't as bad. Yeah. If you're off by two inches, your kicks are going to be oh, just yeah. dramatic, and you just have got to avoid that. Vino nearly spikes in the long-range attempt. That would have been a sick birdie to get. Meanwhile, Mason is battling for his par, and this is going to be off left, and it will be a bogey for Mason. Meanwhile, AB getting all the distance. Oh, there you go. That is a huge, that's like a, that's the scramble birdie. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the rare scramble birdie that you don't really see that often on the scores. He was kind of in, in position though, a little, a little right. He was, it wasn't like he threw a horrible tee shot. It wasn't a horrible tee shot, but I, I think. You can't birdie with a horrible tee shot here. He was, he was unable to see the basket on his second shot and yeah. he had a tree behind oh, his lie. So I think that those two things make that approach shot just so sick. And the fact that he made the putt is really capitalizing. He's got a very colorful scorecard right now, but he is that's at, at even. That's AB's thing. Yeah, that's his thing. Lots of birdies. If he can do that, stay away from the bogeys, he's on lead card usually. Hole nine, a new tee pad on this hole. It is now a par four. 630 feet. It's another dog leg right. You have to get to the top of the hill, and from there, you're going to have a substantial number of trees to avoid as you work your way back down the hill. Very tricky two-shot hole. Placement is key, a very common design aspect on the harder courses here in Charlotte. That early. If it is... That will <laughs> help. <laughs> what is that Plinko madness? That was really great <laughs> kick. It's really fun to watch. A.B., Somehow finding his way through the early woods and into the fairway. Early tree kick left for Garrett. That is going to be scramble mode once again. 
Ach. All right, Dr. Smooth. I'm expecting... Oh, wow, mid-range. I don't know if you can get birdie throwing mid-range here. I... I think you can. I you definitely can. think you. Yeah, I think you can. I, it's, well, we'll be able to see what he's got from there because. You, you, ideally, you'd like to be another 40 feet, but just keeping it in the fairway allows him to have a second shot. Yeah. And by being short of the ideal spot, he actually opens up the back door Anheuser more than he would if he was farther okay. up the fairway. I think he's going to like his position. Garrett fights his way to the top of the hill. And Vino, the awful kick left at the very end of the flight. Let's see what side Mason chooses to attack this fairway with. Yep, he's going down the left side, which... Oh. Yeah, that was on its way. You were right. It's close. But like I said, there's just so I, well, many Well, inevitably, I was right. Yeah, but we, yeah. you had a chance to be... <gasps> it's possible for you to be right in the future. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You were right. That Garrett, was a very quick yeah. setup to throw, and I wonder if Garrett is like somehow mentally checked out. It, I, it's not over by any means, but that seemed a little bit quicker than his typical pace. It could just be an issue with the uh, maybe we didn't get his entire setup with the camera. But Anthony just is getting the best kicks on this hole. Mm -hmm. and, oh boy! And this is the trouble you can find. All over Nevin Park. Vino trying to go flick roller approach. And I mean, this is really Kinda showcasing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It gets a little bit of effort down the hill, but still outside C2. And look what Garrett has in front of him. I mean, he's just begging for this hole to be over. And I think it it's almost over, but it's definitely not completely over mm -hmm. yet. Yeah, I mean, you look into these woods and it's almost time to call the chopper to come and find you because it gets thick in there. You could get lost easy. I mean, a, a rescue squad at, <laughs> at your phone's dial would be a pretty amazing yeah. thing to have out here at Nevin Park. Vino unable to save par, and that will be four bogeys in the last five holes. Meanwhile, AB for birdie and steps that one in. It is so important to be in the fairway off the tee. I mean, and if there was any hole that showcased that, it was hole nine. On the button. Once again, a situation where a decent tee shot, a really good approach with some mm -hmm. good luck, and then a big putt for AB. It's been the recipe for him so far here on the front nine. Vino does finish up the bogey. And Mason unable to get the birdie, but stays at three under. Just the one bogey on the front nine, a very solid start to his round. Meanwhile, Garrett can feel the end of his season fast approaching. Five over after the front nine. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know because of his seating, even if a nine under back nine gets him to a score where he yeah. gets in. It'd be borderline, so yeah. it would take the best nine that he's ever played because I think this back nine's top three hardest back nines we play all year. Well, we're taking a look at our front nine scores here. Brad Williams leading the way at five under, which is just scorching. I'm doing a normal casual round. I mean, this is how I play this course. It's set up a lot of forehands. I, I'm playing pretty well, but the back nine has a lot of danger. A lot of holes, once again, have been lengthened, and there really is. There's no safe par. There's definitely no give, gimme birdie. It is a bunch of tough holes, and anything can happen on any given hole. This format is really challenging mentally, and this course is challenging physically. Yeah, and I said we, and that was that was false because I'm not playing. So well, I, we, you know, like we I feel like I represent rounds. both of us in this situation since you're not playing the event. Like I'm, oh, I'm same. fighting for the commentators. Yeah, you are. Let's go. Yeah, you are. We got nine more we holes. We out here. <laughs> we got nine more holes from round one coming your way in just a moment. 